Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Pete reacting to my favorite Brazilian guitarist. Yeah, so as many of you may know, Vinny's Brazilian and I'm from the States, so in this video series Vinny takes some of his favorite Brazilian guitarists who I've never heard of and we see what I think. That's right, so are you ready? I'm ready. Alright, so today we are reacting to the very much requested Paulo Shreva. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> He's come, come up in the comments so much. Guys, honestly, ever since we did Juninho uh, Afran, which you guys wanted a lot as well, uh, I think probably out of 10 comments, maybe like 5 or 6 are, can you please do Paulo yep. Shriver? Can you do, please, please do Paulo Shriver? So the time has come. All right. All right. Right, so unfortunately, I do need to start the video with a bit of a bad vibe, okay? okay. Because he's died. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. unfortunately. He Recently? A, yeah, like 2014, uh, around that time. He was, only, he was only 41, and he had a heart problem, mm -hmm. you know? So he, um, yeah, he was super young, like, at the height of his career, you know? Yeah. And he had a, a heart condition, you know, that apparently uh, there was not much they could do about it, you know, and he just eventually died, you well, know? Did he have a heart attack or something like that? Uh, no, it's like... It's not a heart attack per se, I don't think. It's like um, when you have a heart problem, your heart doesn't function properly. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not like a heart attack, like yeah, like a yeah. sudden thing. Yeah. It's like a thing that kind of slow, slowly gets worse, you know, as yeah. you get older and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Had a family thing, you know, it was like a family history of, like of that kind of... in the family. Exactly, disease, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's horrible, man. So, yeah, yeah, I'm very sorry I have yeah. to say that, but let's get on with it. Let's pay Paolo some well-deserved tribute. Okay, so basically, Paolo was, uh, it was quite known locally, you know, for like a lot of his uh, early days, you know, like... He from? He's from the south as well, actually, uh, yeah. yeah, from my state, yeah. you know, and uh, he was, he's always been, uh, in the early days of his career, he's always been uh, known locally, you know, but he, re he got really famous at some point because, you know, Angra, Kiko's mm -hmm. original band, so the singer in the band, a guy called Edu Falaski, he he's the second singer actually in Angra. He left the band at some point and formed like um, another band called Alma, you know. And when he was uh, in the band, they had one guitarist, and they wanted a second one. And the drummer in the band with Edu Falaski, he knew Paolo from back in like the local scene, you know. Yeah. So he called him up. Obviously, he auditioned, got the gig, and then very suddenly he became really famous, you know, all over the country, you know. So today, I thought we'd do something a little different. So do you know how normally we start with a, with a, a song and then sometimes I show you some, some other stuff at the end just yeah, for like, mm, yeah, yeah, like yeah, some yeah, sort of jam. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I'm gonna, today I'm gonna show you just a full on jamming shred first. Okay, okay. Yeah, and then we look into a song, yeah? Okay. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm really excited about okay. this. <laughs> Just a little intro for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super badass looking dude. Aggressive tattoos. <laughs> yeah, the seventh string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Nice. I can't even tell whether he's alternate picking or, or sweeping. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Can I say something, it's bro? Just a noise. When I when I was finding this way. when I was finding the videos for you to react, I was watching this and I, was, I checked to see if my YouTube was like quick faster speed. Yeah. You know, I was no, like, no, am, I, am I playing yeah. this at one point five or something? You know. So that's how it, like, that's how crazy this is. Mm. You know. Let me just adjust the volume here. <laughs> Whenever you see that, did you see that? You know, like that symmetric, yeah. beautiful, like yeah, for straight eight tonal stuff. Yeah. yeah. Precision and how yeah, relaxed yeah, yeah. is it as well? Yeah. 
got some string skipping going on there, it looks like, as well. There we go, just a little introduction okay, for One thing you. I want to say about him that I've noticed straight away is, so a guy like him, you notice his guitar, it's nothing flashy. It's yeah, yeah. Black guitar, yeah, yeah. black pickups, black headstock. No, yeah. but, but my point here is, he has nothing to prove. Everything that he proves is in his playing. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't need a flashy guitar to look yeah. cool. Man, know? I know so many stories. I knew a few people that knew him as well, you know, so I've talked to them like over the years, you know, Everton, another famous guitar, another famous Brazilian guitarist, Marcos de Ros. He has a YouTube channel as well. He has a, a lot of um, a lot of stories about him because he used to be friends as well. They're from the same city. And man, like, when I was looking for this video, just I'll tell you one little story, yeah? yeah. When I was looking for these videos, I've, you can find diaries of studio recordings, you know, when they're recording the album with Alma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can find uh, little vlogs, you know, of them in studio. And the first thing is like, he's, just, he's, a, he's a super nice guy. Funny, very like, like amazing sense of humor, you know, really humble as well. Yeah. You know, and uh, there's one part, for instance, <clears throat> that like they're recording, he's, he's doing this um, takes for a solo and he lays down a take and it's like stupidly fast and clean and beautiful. And then he's like, he, he hears it once and he's like, oh, oh, that's awful, mate. Just delete that. Let me do it again. That's messy as, as fuck, you know? <laughs> and everyone's like, okay. We, we didn't hear that. Yeah, and then he fine, does yeah. it again. And then he's like, oh, that's terrible. No, 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 no. That's, and it, and it's, it's so clean, you know, yeah. it's perfect. And then at some point, the, the, the members in the band, like Felipe, the producer, and even the dude Falaski, they're, they're like, is this guy serious? Yeah. You know? And then there's a third take, and it's like, oh, yeah, I'm happy with that. You know? And it's just the same <laughs> every time. Didn't hear any different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But these people, they, uh, these people I know that knew, that, that knew him as well, they, um, they, they always talk about how obsessed he was with like, his technique. You yeah. know? Yeah. It was his thing. You know? He has this really. Um, unusual phrasing that he always pushed himself like when you know the extra mile to not to not sound obvious you know and like the cleanness and how tidy he was yeah, yeah, is yeah. like is the two things that everyone talks about him you know yeah yeah how much he, he, he didn't want to be just another guitarist he wanted to have like more exotic phrasing and everything and like how technical he was yeah, you know yeah, yeah. so there we go little introduction to Paolo okay. so let's check out a song an original song by him now yeah this I'm excited for because with that technique, you can do anything. You can yes, any exa you want, exactly. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. So this is a song he's done probably about a year before he died. You know, it's a song called "To My, to my Father," and uh, you can say he's already sitting down and stuff. You know, because he used to say that yeah, he was always tired because of his heart condition. Yeah, you know? so extra hard yeah. So at some yeah. point, it got quite hard for him to gig as well. So he had to leave Alma and move back to the south and just rest and relax. You know. Yeah the last I don't know few months to a year you know and then this video is from that time it was very special obviously it's a dedication to his dad and man the sound in this well you tell me yeah <laughs> you hear the whammy action yeah yeah Check out those shades in it. Sounds not too gainy. No, it's pretty a fusion sound. From the it? other video, I was expecting like yeah. full metal, but that's like cool. it was better rock or verbal. The other, I think yeah. it was demo in the rock of all. Uh, so it's like. Yeah. Middle pickup as well. It's true, Interesting actually. choice. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Jesus, man. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I don't know whether it's a headbang or just be happy. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. It's, it, you know? it's almost funny, man, yeah. you know? Everything's 
common answer for that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Except for yeah. now. Yeah. And you have different lines intertwining as well, you know? I'm just gonna say this. I remember the first time I heard this, the first thing that struck me was like, how... I haven't heard anything like that before. Yeah. You know? Like, I've heard a lot of, you know, Paul Gilbert playing classical music and everything with like all these like kind of different guitars popping in and out. But I don't know, this just sounds different, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just, um, it's almost like there's a, a musical vision here, yeah, you know? Yeah. No, there's definitely something though. I think it might be just a combination of his sound. Just, yeah, he's kind of like strange phrasing, like different phrasing, yeah, you know? exactly. Um, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but yeah, I, I hear it. Yeah, you know? it's hard to uh, pin it down as a genre, in yeah. it because it's, it's not it's not rock fusion. It doesn't no. sound like that, you yeah. know. It doesn't sound like metal, you know. It sounds very I don't know, very musical in a very guitar-y way, and it's yeah. almost like there's a lot of yeah, just composition skills behind it. You know, yeah, you can yeah. see the guy he was trying to do something. You know, it sounds like a classical piece, like in terms of composition, right? Know? So, but yeah, rock and modern, yeah, you know, exactly, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's a very cool, cool mix. Like the control as well, you know? It just went from a little blues like into blue. <laughs> That's very fusion line, that's really cool. Beautiful sound, yeah. nice tone. We have contemporary dancing going yeah, on yeah, as yeah. well. creative man you know there we go pick it up again Stamina. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say I can't. Went on for like 30 seconds straight. Can you hear, can you hear a bit of Dimebag in his playing? Uh, well, since you mentioned he was a, a big Dimebag fan, yeah, I, th I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, but it's not obvious though. You know, it's not okay. like he's not a Dimebag copy. You know, yeah, okay. like like a lot of people tend to, you know, like you see a lot of people who are like Dimebag yeah. clones, you know, slash yeah. clones, whatever. But I think, um, yeah, yeah, because he's always he uses the whammy bar. In a way that Dime those big goes, openings yeah, as well, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. and like the, the symmetric, you just go up and down with yeah, the shape. There's you that know? diminished shape, like yeah, in, exactly. In, um, technical difficulties as well, you know, that the string yeah. skipping bit. That's I saw him doing that, especially yeah. in the other video. You know? Yeah, exactly. Cool. So probably a little bit like that, you know.
that's that's what you call minimum effort. You know, like just very tight. You know, motion. Yeah, economy of motion. There you go. Wow. What'd you make of that, bro? That was beautiful, but also insanely aggressive. You know, it was like, yeah. It's just very. It was. Um, he had the. He, he he was different, you know. Yeah. He was like he was trying to do something different, you know. That's that's the main thing that strikes me when I watch that, you know. I don't think I've ever heard anyone shred that intensely in a major key. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. The whole thing was in major, you know. Yeah. Except for a few little like odd chords here and there, you know. But yeah. it was like, but yeah, it was like. Yeah. <laughs> There's another story. Everton told me that the first time he saw he saw him live. Uh, it was like with a function band in, a, in this party like in, in, Bra- in the south of Brazil you know and then he was just like he was just watching and didn't, they didn't know who he was like oh yeah the guitarist is good you know like guy you know long hair and stuff Yeah. and it was like pop songs and rock songs you know Bon Jovi that kind of stuff and then at the end the last song of the gig they played fucking Hostile by Pantera oh, <laughs> and then he ripped the solo everything and Everton's like my friend's like who the hell is that guy yeah, you know yeah. and obviously later on they he knew about him. He became. They became friends. Then, obviously, uh, a few years later, Paolo became quite famous in the country. Like I said, you know, because he joined Alma. Yeah, and he was a lovely guy. Very, very humble. You know, obsessed with his technique, and uh, with music, really. You know, so there you go. Yeah, man. So there you go, guys. Thank you for watching another Pete and Vinny reaction video. As usual, if there's any other Brazilian guitarist you think Pete should react to. Please let us know in the comments and we'll make sure that happens for you guys. Also, let us know in the comments what you thought of this video. Did you know who Paulo was before this video? Did you enjoy his insanely clean technique? And as usual, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more videos just like this one. So until next time, see ya! ya.